So a very good afternoon to one and all present over here. Today we have uh, gathered for the commemoration of eighth anniversary of the sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention prohibition redressal act 2013 as per the mandate of the ministry and to create awareness among the students scholars faculties and staff exclusively females to understand the nuances of the act this act is to, pre to provide protection against sexual harassment of women at workplace and for the prevention and redressal of complaints of sexual harassment and for matters connected here therewith or incidental thereto it has its foundations in the vishakha guidelines and establishes a mechanism for dealing with sexual harassment complaints in the workplace at the outset i take privilege to welcome all the key speakers mrs namrata chadda chairperson mahila adhikar abhiyan bhuvneshwar ms shaini s ips ig police biji patnaik state police academy bhuvneshwar and mrs v krishna kumari former chairperson icc and dgm chemical nalco damanjuri i also welcome our vice chancellor in charge professor sharad kumar palita registrar dr ashit kumar das finance officer dr mr k kosla rao controller of examinations dr ram shankar public relation officer mr pragunath bhui dr pragunath bhui and my heartiest welcomes to all visiting professors hod hod in charges all faculties staffs research scholars and students our technical supporting staff and the members of internal complaints committee central university of orissa with these few words i now request our vice chancellor in charge to deliver the inaugural address and inaugurate the webinar over to professor sharad kumar palika sir good afternoon everybody our esteemed speakers today madam dr namrata chada madam saini s ips madam b krishna kumari presiding officer internal complaints committee dr kakali banerji our statutory officers of central university of odisha dr pragunath bhai public relation officer all hods members of the faculty and all lady members teaching non teaching all present here and research scholars students uh, who represent the women folk are present here again on the occasion of eighth commemoration of sexual harassment of women at workplace i welcome all of you all our lady delegates and speakers on behalf of the central university i also deem it a privilege to welcome madam namrata chada who is known to everybody in odisha who was also earlier here in our campus she is a very familiar face and a women leader by virtue of her action and activities she has won the heart of millions and uh, madam saini s ips who was also formerly presently ig police state police of bijapatna police academy and formerly she was also at korapur and uh, madam b krishna kumari uh, dg dgm chemicals nalco as well as former chairperson icc and uh, so i must thank uh, dr banerji for arranging this uh, webinar and this is a mandate that uh, government wants that on this occasion everybody should be aware both male and female should be aware about this act it was a epoch making act which was enacted in the year 2013 in our parliament and uh, this wants to ensure constitutional hello dr amshankar i am in a meeting i am in a meeting you you please go on after this uh, delivery i will uh, do it okay uh, please go on uh. so because of the act there is now a constitutional mandate that women is no longer considered as the second sex weaker sex women is equal sex women is marching foot to foot every inch along with the male counterparts it is happy to know that of late the defense forces of india has also included women in their office staffs this is a great thing so i think uh, before uh, going to the proceedings i should say something regarding the act already dr banerji has said how from bisaka to present things have changed 
So sexual harassment of women results in violation of fundamental rights of a woman to equality under Article 14 and 15 of the Constitution of India, and her right to life and to live with dignity under Article 21 of the Constitution, and right to practice of profession or to carry on any occupation, trade or business, which includes a right to safe environment free from sexual harassment. Further. the protection against sexual harassment and right to work with dignity are universally recognized human rights by international conventions and instruments such as convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women which has been ratified on in on 25th june 1993 by government of india so friends and madams and your colleagues i want to tell you that by enactation of act or enacting this act government of india in the year 2013 as i said it is a epoch making wants to say that women are equal all a walks of life and there is no discrimination there should not be any discrimination of course discrimination has become a part of our life and i want to tell you except anisent periods and very anisent prevedic periods there are women great women who are held with high esteem in the society such as apala gargi maitri and about sabitri we all know these were great women they were given high esteem but after that then our civilization expanded urbanization started cities city states came into existence we found that trade and commerce went on the women's position economically were ruined and her control over the family and the society declined women become subjugated to men and uh, it continued for a very very long period till british period and we know that during british period there was british government along with some social reformers like raja ramon rao there came some changes in the women's role and societal position with satyadaha act in the year 1829 bengal sati regulation act 1829 Hindu Widow Remarriage Act 1856 Female Infanticide Prevention Act 1870 these were also some epoch making thing during british period we know that any hindu woman his husband is dead she was forced to die this also went on up to it in the 1990 also uh, in the modern india this also went on in the dawrala village of rajasthan people also um, put a women inside the burning fire of the husband so that was going on and uh, of course in the last 75 years of our independence a lot of changes taken place government has taken a lot of things uh, changing the societal position and image of the women giving her sanctity and uh, power to be equal with the main force we have seen with madam indira gandhi the former prime minister she is reckoned as one of the best prime ministers of the world a tall woman and women assumed the post of prime minister of such a great country like india also the position of president lok sabha speaker were adorned by women but with that the attitude of society has not very much changed towards the women women is still subjugated there are problems everywhere whether it is a university it is a college office everywhere there is problem and it requires i think today seminar is webinar is very important from that point of view unless the attitude of main force towards the women is not changed unless there is attitudinal change whatever may be the law you are doing it cannot be guaranteed so we require awareness awareness need to be followed by action and even i should say that our women friends they should also understand what is their right unless women understands her own right her own position in the society nothing can be done and it many times we see many things are hidden it's not coming so it is a time a time has come we see that there are plenty of women whether in business industry politics everywhere there are women but we find that these women come from a society or from places where the men folk supports them but this is not the case with all women are still major part of our poverty lines women are major affected whether it is illiteracy whether it is ignorance everything women women are affected 
and uh, almost say 50% of our population is still under poverty. And during that condition, unless we the educated people, men and women, march together, work together, work for the awareness, it is not only the responsibility of women only, it is also the responsibility of all of us who are in any position, high position, everywhere in the society, we must see that our women colleagues are treated equally and more than equally. Otherwise, the situation will not change and requires attitudinal change. With these words, I think we have two very important women with us, very top women, Madam Namrata Chada, Madam Saini, and Madam uh, Krishna Kumari. I hope it is a time to listen to these great women. They have done a lot of things in their lifetime. I think as far as I know, Madam Namrata Chada, she is a, can be a living legend, and uh, she wheels around all the state whether to jail or to any academic institution, anywhere, she is called and to give a talk. And she is an example. And I should tell you that uh, anybody must be knowing Namrata Chada Madam is not a Odia. But she is more than a Odia in the last 30 years. She, she came to Odisha and uh, she talks in such nice, beautiful Odia and she commands respect. Her actions commands respect with these words, I wish our women, our women friends must also come forward, do the best, and anything, nothing should be hidden because there is nothing in the society that uh, puts them behind. With these words, I again welcome with the seminar a great success. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your inspiring words. And uh, as he has very rightly pointed out, for starting from the ancient history to the present times, the world has changed. The uh, status of women has changed uh, either positively or negatively. Both the aspects he has very nicely highlighted, highlight, highlighted. And it's a very important aspect that women should understand their rights, where, where they stand and what they should do. Until unless we educated persons are into the front line to explain these issues, we cannot go forward. So with these few words, I again thank Professor Shahid Kumar Palita, our Vice Chancellor in charge for uh, arranging this, uh, helping me to arrange this uh, workshop because it is like a workshop who are present over here and working for the upliftment of the women folk. So thank you once again, sir. I now uh, uh, request Dr. Anjali Dash, Faculty Economics, to uh, welcome Mrs. Namrata Chadda, Chairman Mahila Adhikar Abhiyan Bhutneshwar, and uh, to give a brief data of her, uh, of her please. It's my immense pleasure to introduce our key speaker, Srimati uh, Namrata Chadda. She is a renowned social activist and a woman leader in Odisha. She is presently a chairperson in Mohila Adhikar Avizan and also a member of Sexual Harassment Complaint Committee. Formerly, she was a member of Zulian Justice Board for the district and also a member of state commissions for women's Odisha and also president of all Odisha blind associations for women. She has more than 20 years of experience in advocacy with the government in policy formulations for developmental projects in various issues related to gender and children. She has creatively initiated new approaches and idea that delivers results more effectively for the development of women and children in the state of Odisha. She has been identifying various issues in the field of gender, equity, trafficking, child abuse, and preparing information education commission project action plans to eradicate the problems related to gender and child. She also involves in training, counseling sessions on women and children issue in public sector as well as private sector organizations, some of which are RBI, SBI, NALCO, etc., as a senior, middle, and junior level personnel. As an academician, she has also associated with various universities and colleges like Odisha State Judicial Academy, Utkal University, Niswas Policy Academy, Gokubandhu Academy, etc. Besides all, he has also published two books in Odia languages. 
he is a national and state level awardee for working in the field of women and children with this brief introductions now i would like to invite shrimati chadda to enlighten us with her knowledge in this evening thank you over to you ma'am ma'am you are muted okay yeah but namaskar jai jagannath uh thanks to this technology they have muted me otherwise it is very difficult to <laughs> when they are asking okay namrata you shut up or you mute uh, so i must convey first thanks to this technology in time of corona uh, they have stay connected with each other uh, different part of the country people are connecting with each other whether they are students they are faculty members they are vice chancellor they are professors so i really convey my thanks to vice chancellor in charge of uh, central university korapur palit sir i have a high regards for him not because he is a vice chancellor here in uh, korapur i knew him long back when he was a professor in nagar uh, uni college and the way his approach to gender justice and gender evolution system that is very wonderful we had to listen to him we know if you know the way he is working in uh, field of women it's really uh, very uh, respectable things for us that yes we have uh, just such a kind person such a genius person with us i really want to convey thanks kapili banerji madam she is the uh, what i am saying the uh, nodal uh, point or coordinator between me and university whenever there is any paper presentation or any seminar she is approaching me i do not know why she is approaching me i am not a very big uh, academician very good in studies but uh, how she is approaching me very softly and uh, asking me of this subject is convenient for me and uh, thank you madam uh, believing in me trusting me and giving me this opportunity i am really honored and uh, feeling very i am very humbled by the invitation of uh, university i am very happy that i am sharing this seminar with the shiny madam we are saying she is a such a uh, inspirational officer for all of odisha's women whenever we are having a gender talk i always give her example look at shiny dekho wo kaise kaam karti hai us ladki ki taraf dekho wo jo officer ban ke aayi hai to when she had joined she was thin uh, very 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 young small girl are ye ips officer ho sakti hai we have so much of bias made towards the police officer ki wo masculine gender hogi lambi chaudi hogi mardani type hogi no with a soft uh, approach soft uh, speaking lady when she joined that and very soulfully with the heart with humanity she was serving to uh, people of odisha Uh, of course my dear uh, krishna kumari from nalco icc is chairperson i had been nalco many times for women's training program in dabanjuri and gul and i have uh, this opportunity to meeting with her i am very happy that she is today here uh, and i am seeing on screen there are many participants many students who are looking at us what madam is going to speak first of all let me tell you one thing uh, yes central we have to give a thanks to Uh, central government uh, that uh, they are giving a notification to each central institution uh, universities okay uh, you observe this uh, day as an anniversary ke hisab se dekhon to karon to because it is the 8th anniversary of sexual harassment at workplace act 2013 but i want to take you little back today we have to first remember bhavari devi for her we are here she is living in a remote village of rajasthan uh, some time uh, more or less she is appearing on national international tv channels for her courage for that case and a few very big journalists used to take her to big platform to introduce her as a living goddess that a law goddess of courage and i want to tell you one thing because of this bhamri devi we all are enjoying the fruit of success specifically the working women whether they are from organized sector or unorganized sector she is the lady who raised her voice against all odds she is the lady being isolated being i mean uh, in a very undignified way 
आइसोलेटेड फ्रॉम कम्युनिटी हर ओन कम्युनिटी कुंभार कम्युनिटी तक अलग करदे जो तुम्हें ये कम्युनिटी रे रही पार ना तुम पुलिस रे केस करीचो तुम्हें जेहेतु सर उत्तोलन करीचो से पाई पुलिस आल्सो नॉट दैट टाइम हेल्पफुल टू हर हर केस मेड दे मेड हर केस सो वीक सो वीक दैट शी लॉस्ट हर केस इन लोअर कोर्ट सेशंस कोर्ट एंड फॉर योर ऑल नॉलेज हर केस इज स्टिल पेंडिंग इन हाई कोर्ट एज अ रिव्यू एंड फाइव ऑफ दोस culprits who gang raped her three of them already died without getting justice she is still fighting and one of the interview she told someone asked you aapko sharam nahi aayi jab aapne case kiya boli mujhe kyun sharam aayegi sharam unko aani chahiye jinhone mere sath aisa kaam kiya that lady she is not qualified highly educated she is from a very backward community very backward village that time no television no more social media coverage nothing was there and she fought we have to remember vishakha versus rajasthan's guideline justice verma has given us really i saluted that judicial officer he was honorable uh, um, justice of um, uh, high court and he has given us that landmark judgment vishakha versus rajasthan that is the judgment who change the whole scenario of this india's working women's status that time we didn't have any legislation that time we didn't have any ipc section specific law for to handling these kind of cases of sexual harassment at workplace but that uh, 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 honorable justice what he did he adopt the international law and blend with our indian constitutions article 14 15 16 20 21 and that give the judgment for the safety and security of working women because we all have a right to live with dignity as per constitution of india this is our fundamental right this is our very very first right and basis of the constitution of india and directive principle of the state policy it is the responsibility of the state to provide all the equal and uh, security to all working women not only working women all women so specifically when the women are going out home and working who will provide them security it is a duty of the employer that duty has been fixed with honorable justice in vishakha versus rajasthan guideline it is a 25 years over very long journey and especially i was also a part of that that time i newly joined i, have, I think my the cv was a little a bit old um more than 28 years when i was working with women's issue we have seen whenever i was visiting any office i was asking whether you have a icc or not internal complaint committee as per vishakha kaine na madam achhi nahi achhi jodi file re achhi it's not working external member is not there when we are talking about legislation we must have one external member in in few organization the chairman of the that committee was a male person no no why i was asking why you have a chair person a uh, male person no no he is the head of the institute madam he is a chairman he is a ceo he is a um, uh, the md or he is a um, uh, cmo chief medical officer whatever he is the head of the position that's why he has he has a license to have the heading of that committee are baba i was telling them this is not about that committee it is a totally independent committee please go through this guideline why don't you understand the essence of that guidelines if you are not able to understand how could you deliver a justice to working women if you do not do not following the guideline of vishakha judgment it was a situation then slowly slowly gradually situation started changing then uh, national commission for women that that time um, punima advani was there i remember and she was traveling all around um, india and not only the cities metros uh, uh, capital cities or uh, big university she had a jan sunwai and jan sambad with uh, unorganized sector women sukinda re jai kalle rasta re jo kaam karuchanti taku pacharile जो उन्होंने सपना हो चो कौन करू चो कौन आईन अच्छी जानु चो ना मैडम आम ना जानवा तो दिस वॉज अ सिचुएशन शी वॉज इन हैदराबाद शी वॉज इन छत्तीसगढ़ शी वॉज इन इंटीरियर ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश शी वॉज इन बेंगाल एंड द ऑल्सर्स वर सेम 
so that mm-hmm. time national mm-hmm. commission for women took this responsibility mm-hmm. to collect all the data and the their demands and they started drafting for a one legislation for the working women and see the result on 9th december 2013 we have a this legislation and now we are following that uh, law uh, religiously in central government offices in my organization has uh, conducted a one survey uh, very it is not a very big survey but it was results were shocking in central government 99.9% organizations they were having a icc uh, why i am giving you this uh, thing because you must have an idea about that and uh, they are not following instructions uh, religiously but he has some more or less uh, they are doing their work but in state government they have a icc but 78% they have a icc others they don't have whenever there is a, any case of sexual harassment come into line like then only they form icc when the case will come otherwise they wait ha theek hai case to kichhi nahi hame kahin ki kariba they are also right and they think that this committee is only for the re- resolving the case nothing else it committee is no more this legislation no more duty no more responsibility it is only for the conducting the sexual harassment cases now the sad part is if you go little further you we started covering private sector horrible results only 7% big big organizations big private agencies they were having a this um, committee ha huh? but that was not proper but somehow they have a that committee but others they don't have till date they don't have why should we have a committee why should we follow this legislation bahut janon ne to aisa bola madam if we will if we will follow this show act or we will form a committee in our industry or in our karkhana or in our office then the more women will come forward and file case so why should we take so much of trouble hum to baith ke bina unke out of the table bane committee we try to solve this issue so you know and i don't want to explain that how could they solve this issue with pressure with so much of um, uh, other things uh, unconstitutional things so that is a situation in in and in this situation we are here uh, uh, uh for many uh, what observing the 8th anniversary of shaw act it is too early to say anything it will take more time to realize people how important this legislation for the working women that is we have to make people aware women's they are quite aware of their rights i do believe in that whether they at domestic field or at working place or in public place when we are women are working in private buses public transport buses they are using tempos autos taxis uh, not private taxis i mean it's a what we are a share basis autos and public transport buses don't you think they are aware of their rights yes they are jete bade ke pakhare asi ki jabardasti basi janti ko ta tango haras karanti they know they have a right they can raise their voice they can go to police station they can dial 100 they can ask conductor to stop here vehicle and i want to file a case against this man who is misbehaving in public place but they don't they just seal their lips why because they know this system is not ready for them they are aware but this system is not ready to deliver them we don't have a that kind of system we have developed we have developed many apps but what to do with the poor girls they don't have a smartphones we have a helpline number sometimes they are not responding so they know if they raise voice then they it create a public i mean what kind of um, a uh, scene creating kind of thing not welcoming by all that people st- will start talking mm, about her character and she has to go from the same place same vehicle same road and uh, tomorrow he can attack on that girl or acid attack or some other kind of violence she may face more violence at domestic level also women are facing violence they know if i file a case against my husband then the this home, they he will i mean throw me out of home and i don't have any place to go my parents will not take me back so this is a situation women are quite aware of their rights at workplace also when they are at workplace they are in a whether in high rank or mid rank or 
junior rank or they are contractual level they do don't you think yeah, they don't know they are they are quite aware of their rights but sometime because of their own dignity own respect what people will say how the office will react we have seen all reported cases the moment women file a complaint against anyone whether it's a true or false immediately whisper campaigning started against her are isi ladki ko kyun cheda ye ye kuch hi aisi hogi ye khud aise karti hogi and don't 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 talk to her say made her so depressed isolated and outcast from that particular office nahi nahi isse baat mat karo tab office ka doctor nahi kale amonare case dai dabo naming her ei sab kari ki taku emiti harass kar dionti either से ऑफिस को छाड़ी को चाहे ट्रांसफर नहीं जाए छुट्टी रे पड़े और मेंटली हैरास है कि तार अवस्था खराब की जाए सो दिस इज अचुएशन आई थिंक दिस इज द राइट टाइम व्हेन वी विल हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग प्रोफेसर पालित सच ए सेंसिबल पर्सन यू मस्ट हैव अ कॉन्टिन्यूस रेगुलर प्रोग्राम विद योर मेल मेंबर्स लेट देम सेंसिटाइज फर्स्ट let them sensitize how to talk to a working woman who is supposed to be your colleague or in higher authority or um, subordinate or she is a just a service provided to you we must sensitize our students we must sensitize our professors we must sensitize our non faculty members faculty members this is very important our respected prime minister has given us a slogan बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ एवरीबडीज आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट नाउ दिस इज अ टाइम वी हैव टू गो फॉर अ दिस काइंड ऑफ कैंपेन बेटा को समझाओ कहीं बेटा को तो हमें पढ़ो चु बेटा को बंचो चु एट एनी कॉस्ट झीओटा मारी दबो किंतु पुओ का मैं किबे भी मारी बको चाहू नहीं वेदर ही इज अ सन ऑफ अ अनवेड मदर और व्हाट एवर रीजन सो वी हैव टू स्टार्ट अ दिस काइंड ऑफ कैंपेनिंग दैट बेटा को समझाओ और बेटा को आगे बढ़ाओ तो देन ओनली वी हैव टू ट्राई टू चेंज द एटीट्यूड ऑफ मैन आफ्टर निर्भया केस वेन कोर्ट आस्क वाई द केसेस आर नॉट डिक्रीजिंग वाई द वायलेंस अगेंस्ट मी वी मैन आर नॉट डिक्रीजिंग वॉट इज द रीजन हाई कोर्ट ऑल्सो आस्क टू गवर्नमेंट वॉट इज द रीजन प्लीज फाइंड आउट वॉट इज द रीजन वाई दिस वायलेंस इज इंक्रीजिंग डे बाई डे वी हैव अ लेजिस्लेशन फॉर ईच एंड एवरीथिंग वी हैव अ लेजिस्लेशन फ्रॉम बर्थ टू डेथ we have to save our girl girl children uh, child uh, in womb we are having a pcp ndt act uh, protection of a child from sexual abuse we have a pocso act uh, protect to women from dowry torture we have a dowry provision act hmm, for old age women old age parents we are having a maintenance act but why why there is so much of violence again 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 for our workplace we have a show act there is so much of violence against women what is the reason at very young age we are giving our children mobile with free net services pornography services violent full of violence games they do not know what is right what is wrong we are feeding them and if you go through those games children who are watching that games if you go so much of violence so much of blood so much of that is a disrespectful language towards women if you go to see any serial any serial whether it's a odia serial bangla serial hindi serial or the english serial whatever serials or web series or netflix or what kind of prime videos all so all those serials web serials television serials full of violence against women and they glorify those heroes they glorify sanju baba kind of film or hero usne kitni ladkiyon ko fasaya kitni ladkiyon ko saath wo soya and we give them reward we give them uh, respect and we glo- glorify those heroes we glorify those person who are involved in this kind of uh, the activities so this is the right time to we have to find out with, whether the problem is lying so we have to change the attitude to of our male it is not i am blaming male member they don't have any fault they learn it from their family as a mother we taught our son okay you are powerful you can do anything to with your wife he has seen that father is beating his mother he has seen how uh, officers are exploiting their secretaries in cinemas there are a very bad jokes about 
boss and secretaries circulating for everybody's telephone they see if a woman is a secretary oh she must be like that so they have uh, that stereotyping um, image of a working women who are working in field and that to in glamour industry and out of the field if they are if they are teachers they are nurses it's okay huh. but if out of that stereotyping role if they are working outside that if they are working in army if they are working in mining area they are working in medical sciences they are working as a scientist and they have uh, always they are looking them as a sex object and uh, uh, the language they are using and they are justifying those thing okay oh chalta hai wo bol diya to kya hoga kon hila jo ki poor type ki deep pod ko hila par to bassa hi nahi so we are feeding these kind of thing to our sons and we don't want to teach them we want to change their attitude and we are asking okay make people aware if the all women will appear yes they are aware they know about their working women right and every second time if anybody will staring them or passing any comment or something they are going to icc icc is not aware of their roles and responsibility they do not know what is their role they do not know to how to counsel a woman they do not know what services they have to provide a victim how to talk to her oh to me kis dei cho thik ache inquiry hoga then this par hoga ki wo jhoot de rahi hai dekh rahi hai dekhte hain so there is a so much of influence by other factors so we have to see we we are women are quite aware but apart from awareness we have to make strengthen our existing system law deliver system judicial system police agency system if that is not capable if she file a case in court and judges are not there courts are not working ha tarikh pe tarikh fashion will go then how could she get a justice so with the awareness this is a right time government has taken a wonderful step make each and every institute central government organization make aware each and every one and it is it is our duty because we are blessed we are in a educational institute we are blessed that our parents are sent to uh, a university for higher studies we have a job in central government our security is there now our what what are our duties we are talking about our rights what the constitution have given us 14 15 16 and 20 when always we talking about our rights we never talk about our fundamental duties the fundamental duty is article 51a kisi bhi aurat se aap degradatory behave nahi kar sakte jo uski dignity pe aanch lata ho so we have to start with that fundamental duty and start this campaigning on that thank you very much they have given me this opportunity to interact with you my my opinions might be hurt some one's feeling or some one's mindset or oh but i i don't want to personally attack anyone or any community or any gender group but this is my views about my experience what i have seen the way we, uh, different department conducting inquiry and how victim is suffering when the time of uh, before filing a complaint in the time of inquiry and after that so it is a horrible things it is not a very successful story for all so that's why i'm asking why we need a one legislation like this at workplace ha jahan pe ek aadmi ko humko sikhana pade baba ek kanoon hai ki tum apni colleague ka izzat karo it should come automatically why should we need a legislation it means there is a problem that's why there is a there is a legislation because all all law never come by their own there must be a very very strong demand from society then only the law came into existence so this is my request to all the where the problem lies and very empathetically we have to identify those issues and support all whether it's a male or female everyone male are also in problem they do not know they are also confused how to behave how to talk how to handle themselves so it is our duty to aware people not only and the uh, male or female even their parents whether they are we are saying oh they are older generation buda tota kuch nahi sikhega there is no age for learning we cannot say okay that is a older generation they can't change their mindset no from if we want to really change the attitude of a male then catch them young from the very young then we have to sensitize our family members our religious guru 
क्योंकि वो बहुत प्रभावित करते हैं ऑल वेदर दे आर पार्सी दे आर बुद्धिस्ट दे आर क्रिश्चियंस दे आर हिंदूज दे आर सिख दे ऑलवेज गिव समाइम सरमान ऑर्डर्स टू देअर कम्युनिटी एंड ब्लाइंडली पीपल आर फॉलोइंग दैम so it is a duty we have to make each and every one aware of this if we are really respect working women because all women are working only few are paid and this legislation for them who are paid whether they are from organized sector or in organized sector but all women are working and we have to respect each and every woman i am very thankful to university central university who has given me this opportunity to interact with you i am here and if you have any doubt any question or anything you wanted to know about the uh, legality of this legislation section by section we can discuss on that thank you very much thank you, thank you so much ma'am uh, is there any uh, the, of course i should uh, brief out uh, what she has actually highlighted in the in her talk which is which actually uh, she has uh, highlighted very three important very important things one is the origin of the act why this act came into picture what was the background it was very clear ma'am because many of us we do not know what exactly know about this is. yes yes where from it was originated people are saying that yes this is a act against the sexual harassment of women but how and where does we stand and what was the attitude why this blending took place So with yes. the indian constitution and the international forum when the western why the western laws were put over here so all these blending activities and the third very important thing that you have highlighted is the constraint for a constraint of every girl that she will be harassed in future she is not opening her mouth at the present moment that is the major thing that we are finding in even in our students in our uh, community in any working place because we think that yes our boss is going to take action over us yes or, yes yes uh, the higher authority is going to take some action so in order to how i mean in uh, in a fear of losing a job or uh, or insecurity uh, i mean sexual insecurity and all those things that i will be harmed tomorrow in the roads or some way uh, in the in the way of my uh, workplace so all these constraints are very important which you have highlighted and these are i think these are very regular routine things nowadays otherwise so many cases which are coming up right now is should not have been discussed in the forum yes yes so that is a very important thing that you have highlighted and uh, i don't know I, there are no questions in the chat box yet but uh, they uh, want to if they want to ask uh, yes yes they are free to ask raise hand uh, some minute please if okay. you want to please ask, if any question, question. Uh, some minute had uh, uh, had raised his hand is there all just check any question if okay. uh, there is sanjay meher yeah sanjay meher you wanted to ask a question uh, do you if you can please unmute yourself and ask sanjay meher i think uh, she he is not there or some problem Any i think case, some I technical think, problem uh, yes yes some technical problem may be uh, because you had raised his hand anyways uh, anybody else if they, if they, if you have any questions from the house here those are present madam uh, you all i am asking to all of you any questions <laughs> or anything you want to ask if not then i would like to uh, ask you a very simple thing that whenever when a complaint is lodged in hmm. any university at that time the uh, we often go for an independent inquiry for a person because uh, to have a clear understanding of the situation that we are we are facing i mean the 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 complaint has brought about now uh, sometimes we get no result out of that and we have to go for the details now what do you think that uh, should be the status uh, i mean the act of the icc to uh, to go with such type of problems where you do not have a clear cut uh, understanding of the case no you see that is that's why i i told you that it is awareness of the icc member first because sometime what happened because of the notification is there they make a one committee uh, the the highest rank officer as a chief person and other members as per the guideline but the problem is what they it is not their fault they are not from law background or not understanding not have a that gender sensitive 
well person or gender sensitization they never attended any any kind of course or classes maybe they are from banking sector they are from uh, economic uh, background or they are from sociology background so it is the duty of the employer that organization whenever they are forming any committee let them have a first uh, trained their uh, committee members because committee member are the key point person who are the who are the responsible for the inquiry and uh, uh, giving a proper justice to victim as well as the respondent so first uh, because they don't uh, sometimes they are confused sometimes they many organization many icc members telephone us madam we are not able to understand whether this case is goes under the sexual harassment or not because it is related to some work related issue or administrative issue or other issues so we told them you have to go thoroughly by the act we are not reading act first we have to thoroughly go by the act it is a very small act they have defined what is sexual harassment what are the reasons how could you file a complaint how could you complete inquiry first you go through that and when when you read the complaint and you read the between the lines sometime complainer is not a very good writer it is you see some the suppose a woman is harassed don't think that she is a writer she is yes, a, yes. she will narrate in a very different way or she is a lawyer she can write a, in a legal language put all the section um, um, in a constitutions uh, fundamental rights and that and they, she will write a complaint no they are a simple they, she is a simple student she might be a simple uh, housekeeper or she is a service provider she is a professor mathematics prof professor and she is uh, do not know what to write how to write and what is a reason so let when the she is approaching the um, icc first of all you have to take that complaint very positively without any biasness and study each line and understand line by line there are many things they are not express or able to write in a proper way but there is always a in between lines na jaise amrish puri ek film ke dialogue kehta hai thakurain meri haveli mein aana there is no mm. sexual harassment language in it par meri haveli mein aana and the way the gesture his tone everything it <laughs> but it shows so yeah. it's just like that you say then they have a first session in fact with that lady with all support and ask what is the reason what what is the incident and she can narrate and then if the committee think yes it comes under the purview of sexual harassment then take that case and right. you uh, you don't have to uh, go by any pressure okay she has filed a case again so and so or this person or that person we, we know them personally this is my request to you all whenever any member of the committee they are closely associated or related or uh, uh, know them very well the respondent better to voluntarily left that committee give your resignation to for that time being for that case to your right. uh, authority yes this is the case because we know them otherwise it not give a very impartial uh, inquiry or judgment kind of thing so i am leaving and you can appoint a other person that is the best practice for a natural justice so we right. have to do that third but third thing is that when they are there is any confusion they can take the help of expertise but if the woman is coming to you you must con conduct a uh, inquiry if there is any any little chance of sexual um uh, harassment is there don't think you need a very big very tangible kind of thing there is a no tangible incident no tangible evidence don't wait for tangibility of anything so if uh, 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 that is not visible uh, things are not there proofs are not there don't scare just conduct properly your inquiry just like you take the case of mamita meher i'm not uh, going uh, money in politics she is a working she was a working woman she was working in a school private school as a director and they don't they didn't have a icc ha huh, you see and uh, the, the, the person who murdered her chopped her burned her and buried her you see and uh, the, the police is okay they're taking the case in a one line okay he is a person he is solely responsible but there are many things are coming out she was threatening that i will expose everyone whatever so might be a, there are a many case of sexual harassment at that workplace but others are pura uh, silent about that issue because they have seen the um, uh, situation of that um, deceased woman the way media wo whisper campaign karke usko vem bana diya ki wo ek ladki thi wo budhe ke sath uska chakkar chal raha tha extra marital affair tha blackmail karti thi that why he did this so we we have to be very careful for those things and uh, uh, why but these things are happening and why so if the one person is coming other are silent it means not there is a no case 
others are might be they don't have a that courage to succumb and that witnesses become hostile uh, in most of the cases if you inquiry this uh, start inquiring about this case you ask for respondent respondents witness will come with all proof and yeah, they will say yes it was not happened but when you ask uh, agreed women's witnesses they will come now nah, madam hame to kichhi suni nu jaani nu humko pata nahi hai kya hua these type of things they are giving in writing statement so we have to be very careful about when we are conducting inquiry okay we should not be confused <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, there, uh, there is one question from uh, well, uh, Dr. Neeti Sahib from Economics. Just uh, put her, my, my, give her a microphone. On on. Hello. Hello. Ha, go on to go on to. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Ma'am, Namaskar. This is Dr. Neeti Sahib. uh uh ma'am my question is that while conducting an inquiry uh maybe uh, uh, like for witnesses or uh, the respondent or the uh, the uh, victim uh, whether the uh, suppose uh, if the witness uh, or the um, respondent says that they want to have the legal the lawyer with him during the inquiry is it permissible no 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 first of all icc uh, is a independent inquiring body it is not a court and even in women commission and human rights commission where who influential people they always take advocate with them i never allow this kind of practice it is not permissible by law also because in commission or inquiring body you don't allow okay don't allow any advocate number 1 this is this is this is what the law is saying it is about the great woman if she is not able to speak i mean yeah. suppose she is a, uh, uh, she is a mentally uh, disturbed or not able to speak then she can authorize someone someone of from her family member okay on behalf of her they will speak otherwise no advocates are allowed not at all don't go in this practice this is the one thing we have to learn uh, all icc member we should not and the second thing is we also when we are preparing a report we should not also going through a very legal kind of uh, report writing or conclusion report we are not judges we are not delivering any judge on a one inquiring case we are a fact finder ko jo bhi fact aayega jo bhi dono ki taraf se aayega we have to compile kaun sa statement kisse corroborated ho raha hai corroborated ho raha hai to charges has been proven or not proven whatever we have to give up a report with recommendation and it is duty of the authority they will follow that recommendation whether suspend them or term, um, de demotion of that person or whatever so it is the duty of the authority the second thing because it is a central university you all are employee of the central government now 2015 onwards central uh, government's rule at a workplace harassment also has changed you have to be very careful if a person um, uh, has a complaint against him of, on this basis sexual harassment and if the charges has been proven then it means not the authority will take as a, a, a action as per the um, uh, icc recommendation they will definitely take take but first they will frame the charges against that gentleman and when they they frame the charges against him then they it means it is a charge sheet charge sheet hone ke baad to you see there is a no uh, promotion he cannot go out of station or out of country no visa nothing and ab, jab tak inquiry khatam nahi hoga charge sheet hone ke baad tab tak usko usi jagah pe rehna padega then the after uh, after charge sheeting him then the again inquiry will start and that time the institution will provide him a one assistant one advocate mane any assistant from that department only that organization he cannot a uh, higher uh, professional lawyer outside to so, ab uh, unko dega uh, icc as a jury member ban ke baithenge and they will verify all the um, um, papers whether it's a procedures are follow or not crp has follow or not service rules procedures are inquiries follow or not they will see they will re examine all the witnesses whether they have given all this statement in pressure or in influence whatever then that committee will decide the organization will appoint a one presiding officer and then they will fix a charge and after charge sheeting if the charges has been proven to uske baad to you see in central government it is goes under the uh, major penalty not in a minor penalty and you know what are the results of major penalty termination hai naukri se nikalna hai pension band hai 
those all things they will uh, follow so for uh, for inquiry icc initial stage try to settle those issue if it is a very petty kind of thing koi comment maar raha hai galti se maar raha hai communication gap hai okay baba writing me apologize de do if the agreed woman is agree don't pressurize her say no tum compromise karo no if she is agree she is accepting his apologize letter and he will uh, promise that he will not disturb then there is a matter of settlement agar settlement nahi hota then you go for inquiry if you are going for inquiry then don't allow any advocate at all थैंक यू थैंक यू थिंक यू आर क्लियर आई बट यू आर क्लियर हो गया ना यस जी मैम थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर फॉर दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डिस्कशन थैंक यू आई विल डिस्टर्ब यू इन फ्यूचर आल्सो ओह श्योर श्योर माय प्लेजर सो थैंक यू वंस अगेन फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम सिडनी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ ओडिशा फॉर जॉइनिंग अस टुडे आई नाउ विल मूव ऑन टू आवर नेक्स्ट स्पीकर Ms. Shaini is uh, IPS IG Police training, Biju Patnaik State Police Academy, Bhubaneswar. So before uh, I go, request her to deliver her address, I request Dr. Anindita Nayak, Faculty Anthropology, to introduce Ms. Shaini as to the August gathering. Dr. Anindita. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to introduce Honorable IPS Ms. Shaini as ma'am. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Ms. Saini S. I. P. S. Ma'am is currently serving as I. G. of Police B. G. U. Patnaik State Police Academy, Odisha. A uh, supremely confident personality, living an example for women power and multitasking. Ms. Saini looked after anti-corruption work and also look regular lectures in various central government training institutes. and central organizations on preventive uh, vigilance crpc investigation mm-hmm. of corruption matters etc during her tenure in cbi as superintendent of police of devgarh and sundargarh and as dig of police south western range handle left wing extremism effectively during the field positions uh postings as district sps and range dig and while in cid cb odisha ma'am has handled investigations relating to violence against women and girls she has achieved specialization in left wing extremism gender and child rights a strong empowered and determined lady with post graduation in diploma in communication and journalism and ma in gender and development studies ms shaini never misses an opportunity to emphasize the need for the women to be independent and confident one she has been recognized dgps distinction in 2006 dgps commendation role 2016 governor medal 2016 antrik suraksha seva medal 2017 president's police medal for meritorious service on the occasion of republic day 2017 now i request ma'am to deliver her address over to you ma'am what do you think we are very proud of you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i am welcome ma'am who's delivering you thank you so much and nice to see all of you um my uh, i uh, sri uh, professor sharad kumar palita uh, vice chancellor of the university present uh, i'm happy that you have been sitting through sir uh, madam namrata chadda uh, we have been knowing each other since 2004 uh, she was um, in state commission for women when i joined bhubaneswar as asp city um, distinguished speaker ms uh, krishna kumari uh, ms uh, kagoli uh, banerji who has been the coordinator for this session uh, thank you so much and uh, nice to know that uh, you have been uh, you have taken the initiative to organize this kind of a function uh, i think i'll start from where we have uh, madam uh, had just stopped regarding the advocate uh, with respect to how the enquiry is to be conducted um, there are a lot of uh, confusion in the state government but since central university is under the central government this is more or less streamlined 
and uh, it, 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 it the the inquiry committee will undertake the inqu inquiry as per the departmental proceeding rule applicable for the respondent uh, so it's for me now to clarify who is a respondent respondent is anybody against whom a victim has lodged the complaint before the internal complaints committee we have heard from madam as well as the vice chancellor regarding uh, the background coming back to the advocate uh, the it's mentioned in the rule uh, you may please refer to sexual harassment of women at workplace rules 2013 i just managed to take a copy of it while you were discussing it uh, rule 7 sub clause 6 says the parties shall not be allowed to bring in any legal practitioner to represent them in their case at any stage of the proceedings before the complaints committee you would be remembering the famous case where uh, Justice uh, Ranjan Gogoi was involved where um, the victim had requested for a legal practitioner and uh, the Supreme Court had turned it down. So that's when I really looked into it and found out that this is actually in the rules. But if you go by, uh, if you, if the act says that the inquiry will be conducted as per the rule applicable, like in Odisha, the departmental proceeding in, in inquiry, the charged officer is entitled to take a legal practitioner if he decides so he can take mm -hmm. assistance of a legal mm -hmm. practitioner so i really don't uh, understand why if you can take uh, in a state government it permits assistance of a legal practitioner can you hear me okay uh, so, uh, I don't know why it is not there. Nothing wrong in having, uh, because there are many, I have found in departmental proceedings, mainly officers who are very, very smart. They bring out those correct legal uh, points and um, uh, get away in many cases. But then uh, people who don't understand the nuances of law, so that they are not disadvantaged. It's all right, I feel, if you have the, but the rule doesn't, as Namrata Madam had said, the rule doesn't permit it. I would like to briefly uh, like touch upon um, uh, take you to the preamble of the uh, this is in commemoration of the sexual harassment at workplace act so i'll just take you through the preamble where as uh, your vice chancellor had said there is a reference to article 14 uh, the preamble says as to what is the requirement of enactment of the sexual harassment act as you all know it came in 2013 and the preamble says Kakuli, uh, uh, can I know how many uh, cases have been dealt by? I think there is a problem in the network. Uh, Kakuli, can you tell me how many yeah. sexual harassment cases have been dealt by Central University in last one year? I uh, hear ma'am, we don't have any case right now for the last three years. Okay. Before that, we had uh, two. Okay, okay. So this is uh, one thing that, but um, I would like all the people listening to this to actually think, uh, is it that there has not been any sexual harassment in Central University in last three years? I'm sure the answer from each one of you, whether you say it or not, is no. There have been incidences yeah. of sexual harassment. So it is like not true of Central University alone. It's true of the office that I'm sitting in at present. I have seen employers right. taking taking pride in saying that we don't have any such case of a sexual harassment in our office. So um, uh, uh, when we come Maybe to the issue, lost. yeah, yeah, when, Maybe when not we come lost. officially, officially not lost. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm uh, yeah, 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 officially, I understand. And officially, every year we have two three cases. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and even two, three is like such a uh, under, uh, underestimated. Uh, because uh, I'm sitting inside the vice so I'm not talking about the details. No, uh, I, th I think I think Kakoli, there would be like much many more numbers every single day happening in that true, university true, true. campus. I'm sure. Uh, and I'm not trying to like put down the Central University. I'm saying it might be it is must be happening in the office that I'm right sitting right now. Okay, so it's like not about that. So the issue is exactly that. We have an excellent legal framework in place, at least a decent one uh, framework in place. But as usual with every other law that we have, the issues are in implementation. And uh, 
same with sexual harassment matter where sometimes i have seen the best of the employers the best of the head of office that comes in they also feel when a, when such a matter comes up they pray within uh, themselves i hope that lady doesn't come and report to the icc <laughs> <laughs> so you might have you might have heard it uh, but then you 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 wish that it doesn't come to the surface uh, and um, and uh, they are not bad people they think the reputation is of, of the organization is more important than the right of that individual who has undergone the sexual harassment so this is true in other matters also so same with sexual harassment the numbers we have a fr legal framework in place we have internal committee uh, committees in place but actually uh, when it comes to implementation uh, has that provided uh, we have responsibilities of employer laid out very very clearly in the act uh, but when it comes to uh, ad addressing the issue of uh, uh, sexual harassment that happens at workplace has this legal framework contributed to reducing the incidences i doubt but but it's still within us the responsibility of the employer the responsibility of the internal complaints committee uh, the proactive role that they can play can actually bring in the, the 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 state has provided the legal framework the state has put in the people in place now it is for them to decide whether you proactively take it which would finally at the end of it what do we aim at we in, uh, at the at the end of it we aim at providing a safer work environment for women and pro, in, and uh, reducing or um, not having any case of sexual harassment uh, for a women at the workplace so uh, i would like to like take you to some of the uh, legal uh, provisions which would uh, make you understand because there are students also listening so we'll first start with what is sexual harassment uh, so this is a little bit uh, interpretation from the act i'll just briefly summarize what the act says as to what are the things that constitute sexual harassment so it says any or one of the any or more of the following what are the following it can be a physical touch a physical contact or advances it can be a demand for a sexual favor it can be a demand it can be a request it can be a hint at a sexual favor it can be a sexually colored remark while a woman passed by it can be somebody trying to showing a pornographic material to a woman and what is very very important for all of you to know it can be any other unwelcome physical verbal or non verbal conduct of sexual nature so from this what do we understand there are three aspects three ingredients to an act for which it has to be called called a sexual harassment act so the first is the the big thing is it has to be sexual in nature the second is it must be unwelcome to the woman it must be unwelcome to the woman in instances where the woman has welcomed such conduct the woman has requested a male colleague please show me such a pornographic material or whatever that's not like it doesn't constitute a harassment so this is very clear it has to be sexual in nature it has to be unwelcome it has to be seen as unwelcome by the woman third is that it has to be something that occur at a workplace and uh, the a very good thing that has happened with this act is the definition of the workplace which all of you need to know that generally we presume that the workplace is really at the place central university we think it's a workplace where you are sitting classrooms conference all these are all workplace but the definition of the workplace as per the act is very broad based it includes any place visited by a woman as part of a work so if one of your faculty is visiting a remote village in malkangiri district uh, or motu of malkangiri district and motu is the workplace for that woman employee of central university of uh, so of uh, koraput central university and if a sexual harassment happens at uh, motu it's the, if she has gone to motu as part of uh, as part of a work then the harassment that happened there will constitute harassment at the workplace and if it has happened in the conveyance used by her to travel to motu in malkangiri the in the bus that also constitutes the workplace so this act has a very broad based definition of workplace which is important for people in icc to know uh, when somebody reports 
uh, a sexual uh, harassment incident uh, coming to again uh, you, uh, the it's very interesting the act uh, is titled sexual harassment of um, women at workplace act so i always like first reading i felt uh, why is it that women who constitutes women under this act is not defined again um, uh, the act defines a grieved woman the act defines a grieved woman and uh, who will constitute a woman who gets covered under the sexual harassment of women at workplace act it's not just you don't have to be necessarily an employee of central university of she must not be drawing pay from the central university she can be a laborer engaged for a work by a contractor who has a contract in the section in the central university even the protection as per the act is extended to a daily wage um, daily wage um, um, uh, lady who is coming to central university because the campus would then be her workplace so this gets uh, but so when such a lady come comes up with a case to the internal complaints committee of the central university and uh, uh when uh, when when a sexual harassment incident uh, comes to the internal complaints committee uh, there, there can be two probabilities one can be one can be that the, sex, uh, the allegation is against an employee of the central university in this case the, uh, we refer to the person against whom the allegation is made as the respondent so the respondent can either be an employee of central university or the respondent can be a private person so what would the internal committee when it is a when it is a when the respondent is an employee of a, you are sure that the internal complaints committee can deal with that and deal disciplinarily uh, uh, whatever so in case of an employee the first thing that the internal committee and complaints committee need to do is to look at whether whether the aggrieved woman woman is requesting for a conciliation or not again conciliation is whether to go for conciliation is not or not is not a decision to be taken by the internal complaints committee but whether the aggrieved woman has asked for conciliation or not is willing to willing to have a conciliation with the perpetrator or not if she is fine with it if the if the harassment is petty in nature but as it amounts to uh, it fits into the definition of sexual harassment but since maybe it has happened for the first time she is willing to pardon him so he writes a written apology so with respect to an employee of the central university you can go for conciliation if the agreed i am repeating again if the agreed women request woman request and if conciliation is ruled out then you have to inquire into the complaint as per the procedure provided so in the in another case which i was like telling a few minutes ago ago this if the uh, if the respondent is a private person what do you do so again it is a responsibility of the internal complaints committee to ensure that the matter is referred to the police or whoever or the district officer uh, under the act for further action because you don't have jurisdiction though it amounts to you cannot deal you cannot impose a penalty even if you look into the matter what do you do with a private person who who uh, if he is a if if the private person is uh, engaged in some way you can discontinue the contract or whatever 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 but to deal with it legally uh, if it is a private person you need to refer it to the police again the internal complaints committee the act makes it mandatory that if the allegation raised by the victim is serious in nature and it amounts to a criminal matter the matter needs to be if if it is prima facie cognizable then the matter needs to be referred to the police for investigation so we have been telling about the act i, I just occurred to me during this that uh, the act makes it mandatory for the internal complaints committee to refer such prima facie cognizable cases to the police but uh, justice j s verma who had uh, come up who was appointed after the nirbhaya case you all know uh, so he gave a lot of uh, recommendations after lot of study and uh, consultations i think uh, dr uh, justice leela set was in the committee and gobal subramaniam uh, advocate so they the panel was of the opinion that this 
though as per the uh, i am clarifying once again as per the act the internal complaints committee if prima facie case is made out it has to be referred to the police but the panel had a different of difference of opinion by the time the panel gave its findings into uh, the 2013 act had already come so they felt that this should be left to the victim to decide ki whether she should go to the police or not is it, i think there is some disturbance yes i am repeating so whether whether the matter is to be taken to the police station or not is presently a sort of bound down uh, mandatory duty on the icc uh, as per the present legal position i am just wanting you to know that there are many who feel that including very respectable uh, judicial officers who feel that this should be left to the victim to decide the victim has should have a say in deciding whether the matter should be dealt by the internal complaints committee or uh the local police station but of course yes if it is uh, if if those are cases of serious in nature like rape or other kind of things those are different matters we are discussing the things not as grievous or serious as those okay so uh if uh, coming back to uh, what are the um, legal provisions in the act um the act also details a lot of uh, duties and responsibilities of the employer which is very very important for each head of office and others uh, to know and uh, the act doesn't say that it is only the head of office who is the employer it can be also the uh, officer responsible for administration of policies at the workplace it need not the employer need not necessarily be always the head of office there may be an allied office there may be a person who is supervising the work there so it can be the contractor discharging contractual obligation to the employees if suppose you have outsourced menial work to a contractor uh, so that if if a if a if one of the employees um, daily wage person uh, lady complains of sexual harassment the employer can be uh, central university of odisha and in the contractual staff it can be the contractor concerned also so uh, the duty coming back to the duties of the employer the employer it is uh, the employer's responsibility to provide a safe workplace working environment for the women working under him uh, he he has to make very very clear statements which uh, messaging uh, to make it clear that sexual harassment is prohibited in this office uh, the details of the internal complaints committee who are the members who are the what are the mobile numbers have to be displayed at prominent places in the campus uh, as uh, what is happening at present uh, the there is also responsibility to organize uh, uh, awareness programs among the staff and other employees uh, when an, an internal complaints committee take up uh, cases uh, the employer is supposed to uh, provide all assistance uh, in uh, procuring attendance of witnesses in uh, getting them the required documents and Uh, the the there are two kind of reliefs that can happen while uh, the in, in, internal complaints committee uh, uh, proceedings are going on you don't have to wait for uh, the, there are like clear deadlines for all these things i am sure most of you would know but i'm just like um, uh, telling it in short um, for a week, for a uh, for a woman to come forward and report a sexual harassment case there is a timeline so this has to be within 3 months of the alleged incident so there is a timeline fixed beyond 3 months ordinarily not allowed but then there is discretion on the internal complaints committee to look at the circumstances if there are circumstances the woman was being threatened uh, not to go file uh, sexual harassment this 3 month can be exempted and beyond 3 months the complaint can be encouraged and after the complaint has been received the notice to the respondent has to be issued within 7 days by the internal complaints committee the respondent has to be notified within uh, seven days the the respondent has to reply to the notice within 10 days the inquiry has to be completed within 90 days for the, for the internal complaints committee i think uh, in conference all only like is there anybody who wants to say something because i found find the audio in that uh, do you want to say something anybody sitting in conference see you one no i think uh, it's muted from our side 
okay no but you know in in between it's getting unmuted so there's some disturbance mm -hmm. okay thank you uh, so for uh, the inquiry to be completed it's like 90 days timeline for after the uh, internal complaints committee complete the findings they have only 10 days to submit their findings submit their report and the uh, action by the employer uh, the i think there is 60 days time uh, for the employer to decide take uh, decide on the report of the uh, committee and 90 days time for the respondent to file appeal uh, so this is uh, this is the uh, responsibility of the employer and responsibility of uh, the internal complaints committee uh, and um, uh, we uh, so we have heard uh, from the earlier speakers regarding the background of the act actually when Supreme Court uh, came up, uh, this was Vishaga guidelines was uh, issued by the Supreme Court of India. Actually, the, the government of India also agreed to uh, those guidelines, uh, which came to be known as Vishaga guidelines. Vishaga was one of the NGOs and uh, the Vishaga was a platform on which so many a group of NGOs came and agitated in the Supreme Court. So why, when uh, in the judgment, when uh, Supreme Court disposed of that, it was a public interest litigation, when Supreme Court disposed of that, uh, and issued these Vishaga guidelines. Uh, within the guideline, there was an appeal to the government of India, to the central government and the state government. I'm just reading it out. It says, in parallel 11 of the judgment, it says, the central state governments are requested to consider adopting suitable measures, including legislation, to ensure that guidelines laid down by this order are also observed by the employers in the private sector. So they said there has to be a uh, these are just interim guidelines, but we look forward that there is a legislation and when such a legislation comes up, they also wanted to include the private sector, which actually when are, uh, uh, in the 2013 Act, sexual harassment at workplace uh, is extended to all women at workplace, irrespective of whether it is public work, uh, a public office, government office or a private sector so there are separate procedures laid down it's called as local complaints committee in the private sector mostly you're all employees um, uh, students and staff of uh, central university listening and uh, in future many of you will be employers uh, and what we can do at present uh, i think is uh, when um, uh, when such incidences in uh, instances come to our notice uh, it, it is not just sexual harassment at workplace is not a matter of women madam namrada chadda was also uh, requesting you to have uh, interaction with boys and men for this i think this is not a matter for uh, the, uh, these rights of the women are uh, universally accepted human rights there's nothing special that is being demanded and and uh, this is uh, for uh, for having such a safe working atmosphere, uh, we have to like engage not just girls and women. We have to en engage boys and men too. And uh, it's like has to be a continuous endeavor on both the part of the uh, employees, all of us, because who commits the sexual harassment? It's mostly a co colleague, not necessarily that it's always them. Employer means the uh, by definition it is just one person or two. But uh, the employees are also responsible to ensure that there is a safe atmosphere for women. Uh, there are more uh, proactive steps required both from uh, employees as well as employers uh, ensuring this uh, dignified work atmosphere for women. And another important thing that I would like to flag is how a victim feels when she comes forward and finally reports. There may be many instances of sexual harassment that a woman ordinarily would have uh, faced in a but but she uh, but she comes forward only when she feels that this is graver than uh, what had happened earlier or like she can't or when she feels that it has happened so many times that i can't take it anymore so how do we make that woman feel uh, so that is like there is so much wanting in this area too because when a woman generally comes and reports such harassment in many instances, we find that the woman is re-stigmatized uh, again. So um, the other day, a lady officer uh, within the state government was telling me about a senior uh, to whom she reports repeatedly telling her, 
prima facie basiki musangare kada honi she says prima facie this doesn't seem to be something which is um uh, which constitutes something in sexual in nature but there is a background to it there is a circumstance to it there is an environment made by that person concerned by way of gesture by way of other activities by way of previous conversations for which this particular conversation gets covered in the uh, in the as an act of sexual harassment uh, coming to this again though uh, justice jays verma and gopal subramanian and leela said panel had difference of opinion with respect to uh, a lot of suggestions to be uh, suggestions on how this act need to be improved this is again one thing that they wanted that it should be included in the act that the perception of harassment should be from the perspective of the victim which actually is not explicitly mentioned in the act um and um Uh, I, I, re I read the, the the comment. They said the unwelcome behavior should be seen from the subjective perception of the complainant. So this is something that we need to like look at. And uh, one more thing: uh, why so many less number of cases are being reported in the sexual harassment committee is because uh, because the, uh, the this is being presently dealt in house. for which justice js verma had suggested an employment tribunal for dealing uh, with all receipt of complaints and adjudication of the complaints because the panel felt as long as this matter is dealt by the um, uh, dealt by the in house dealt in house under the same the internal committee members all under the head of office of that organization uh, very less likely that this would yield the desired results Uh, the numbers of sexual harassment cases being reported to the internal complaints committee in different organizations are points to this fact that the opinion of the panel that this will be counterproductive in fact there will be much more fear for the uh, victim to come and report uh, also thinking of future actions uh, that can be taken against her uh, so i would uh, stop by uh, saying uh, how, um, how this um uh, a little bit on this disturbance actually uh, so there can be uh, hostile uh, uh, hostile environment for a woman also and there can be a quid pro quo environment so it need not be uh, need not be uh, need not be hostile i remember a case of an educational institution where actually uh it relates to um, where, where the um, the research scholar was told that um, i uh, there are uh, places where assistance is offered there is another instance in a college where the teacher the professor said that um, i will fail you if you don't agree that i will not clear your project i will do this i'll do that and then finally when people looked into details of that matter there were like large number of girls in that um uh, in in educational institution uh, which the uh, very very senior um, teacher had um, sexually exploited so uh, i i wind up by saying that when a victim actually takes courage and comes forward to report this matter before internal complaints committee or before an employer let us stand by the victim and not stigmatize her again Uh, extend all uh, emotional support to her and not uh, make her feel um, isolated or stigmatized uh, let us preserve her identity keep, uh, let us keep it as confidential as the rule mandates as much um, uh, 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 keep it confidential as is required by the law and le let us act on the reports of the internal uh, findings of the committee in an exemplary manner which would uh, which would uh, make other women come forward because one uh, the experience of one woman coming forward and lodging a report before internal complaints committee we need to know that there are so many other women watching as to how this is this is going ahead so if there are like positive um uh, manner in which we have handled it this will encourage other women also who are facing harassment at workplace to come forward and report and i i look forward thank you so much for uh, all of you for a patient listening and i look forward to any questions from uh, any of you who have listened to the talk thank you thank you thank you thank you so much ma'am you have already cleared many uh, many of the queries as per the laws that uh, that are being framed under this act 
and uh, the three things that you you also find uh, have uh, very well raised is actually the what is the sexual attitude that is what comes under this act and the uh, the victims i mean both criminal cases as well as non civilian cases both you have very nicely highlighted because the lodging of a complaint of course it 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 matters the type of complaint that is being lodged by the victim is uh, a very important role that uh, the the icc has to play and the case studies that you have highlighted for the particularly for universities and colleges which are our mandate right now for as a as a higher education institution thank you once again ma'am uh, as such we don't have any questions right now so we move on to our uh, नमस्कार मैडम दिस इज डॉक्टर मिनती साहु माइ क्वेश्चन इज टू साइनी मैडम Uh, ma'am as uh, uh, in the university we are uh, we are having student exchange programs our students are going to other colleges and universities other students uh, from other university students are coming to our campus so suppose uh, some incidents happens and a respondent is from the other university so in uh, such situation uh, how the uh, the case uh, the case will be filed with our university icc and uh, in that case respondent is from the other university how the case can be dealt in that case whether the icc will transfer the case to the other university icc or how in such situation uh, the our university icc will deal if such situation happens where uh, the aggrieved woman the girl is from our campus and the respondent is from the other university who okay. who has came to our uh, campus for some academic purpose or something like that okay so okay uh, so this is a uh, this is an interesting question uh, so the um, st uh, the research scholar is from your university and the respondent is from another university right uh, mm -hmm. that's a question uh, i i think it uh, may not be the ma'am may not be the research I, scholar any of the uh, girl student who is studying here not okay the, uh, any student girl student who is in uh, who is studying in our university okay Uh, so this would be dealt by the uh, internal complaints committee of the place where it happened uh, because there will be th this has happened in any in uh, if it has happened in an you, there is you can't say this is extension definitely of a workplace but the recommendation of the internal committee will finally refer if the respondent being a government employee the action against him uh, it, it if i am not saying that you don't have I, I don't have a standard answer. Uh, you have definitely the jurisdiction in this matter. But if the internal complaints committee can take a complaint and ensure that a disciplinary uh, inquiry is actually conducted here, also it's fine. I think uh, I'm not very I'm sure not on it. But but uh, uh, but I want to yeah. add if the chairperson permit me in yeah. this case. Yeah. Yes yes yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, actually, yes, I want to make it clear that come just a bit. We will be in the city. अदरवाइजी the woman she is not comfortable because she is from she was she is studying in central university and she visited bhopal any college or she is not able to travel long in for time of uh, uh, inquiry or she cannot uh, appear before committee then she can request 
the that uh, transfer this case to our particular uh, her institution but it is always preferable because that person belongs to that particular institution and it is the punishment or after finding the inquiry i am not saying the money uh, he is a culprit or uh, he must be a culprit but if they found guilty it is the, his institute will um, prescribe or his institute will recommend for the uh, further action uh, against that uh, particular student or teacher or member of that institute to their particular organization as per service rule so it is service rules always applicable to that particular institution so it is always whenever there is a two institution to ye it happens between inter college or inter institution or they are visiting one place or museum or museum direct museum authority or museum uh, person or officer or any if non faculty member uh, uh, use any indecent behavior to them so it will be filed under that institution this is the regular practice we it is a we conduct these two three kind of inquiry like this and previously so it it would it, it will always better to conduct in that jurisdiction not in the place of that but in the place of where he is appointed then the authority can take proper action against them uh, right. i would like to add yeah, here the uh, yes, i would yes, like yes. to add that actually the incident has incident has occurred in uh, central university the respondent is somewhere else so technically ah, then, you then have is, say, no. technically you have jurisdiction the internal complaints yes, committee is jurisdiction yes, but there is but there is another perspective that immediately comes to my mind which madam has already uh, clarified but your uh, the the other university um, employer or head of office who should take action against the person yes, concerned yes, yes. Um, will be more uh, like uh, he he will be more likely to act upon his internal committee uh, uh, recommendation and uh, you may not be able to like follow it up of course you have jurisdiction but you will get jurisdiction only with respect to a respondent who is of your university here the respondent yes, is yes. here the respondent is uh, from because it's basically why why the internal committee even if it happens i had already earlier clarified that if it is a private person you have to refer to the police because you don't have jurisdiction because sexual harassment act uh, posh act is a civil remedy so it prescribes penalty for a respondent and you neither the central university icc nor the um, uh, head of office there is in a position to impose the penalty prescribed under the act so that is the reason why technically speaking as yes, but the act doesn't act mandates only disciplinary action against the respondent it is not a normal crime where you can give fine or but disciplinary authority only can impose the punishment so it has to be at the place where his disciplinary uh, that internal committee will report the findings to the disciplinary authority of the respondent in which case you referred is of or a different university the of, or they can take the help of local complaint committee too because local complaint committee headed by the, uh, that district collector it is under them so nodal officer appointed by them so if uh, the he is a student or private employer or something else so they can approach local complaint committee too there is a choice i mean options not choice options are there but again local uh, complaints uh, committee I, the I same mean, issue I mean, is uh, there yes 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 actually i mean uh, only the prima privacy complaint can be taken up by the university but it has to be transferred to the respondents uh, university for further action yes, that is it, what i understood right yes it can so, be received uh, it can be received by central university yeah, but it, it but has to be forwarded for forward for to the, uh, the the respondents uh, uh, workplace yeah. if it is a government the government uh, organization if the respondent uh, is a public servant or an employee Or whatever, whatever. Huh. Yeah. yeah, if it is a pure private yeah. person, the choice uh, private person uh, who has come from another university but is not, then it has to be an employee. Uh, yeah, uh, then it has to be the local police yeah. station. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much, Namrata. I will see you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, a nice interaction. Uh, before uh, we call upon, uh, we have another speaker today, a very learned speaker, Mrs. V. Krishna Kumari, former chairperson ICC, Nalco Damanjuri, and uh, she is uh, also the uh, DGM of uh, Chemical Division uh, in Nalco. 
So uh, we, uh, we, uh, we welcome you, ma'am, to uh, St. Louis of Orissa. And as you have been hearing uh, a lot of discussion on this act, so we would also like to hear you some cases from your institute, who is uh, basically a very close neighbor. And before that, our Vice Chancellor wants to speak something. Uh, we'll just allow him because he wants to leave. So we'll just uh, give him an opportunity. Sir, over to you. Madam uh, Krishna Gauri, Madam. Madam yes, Namita Sada, Madam Saini. So I will not be able to listen to Madam, but I have all my best wishes. And I have heard uh, Madam Namrata Chada and Madam Saini. They are uh, one of the best speakers. Not only that, they are the best in their field. And here I want to tell you, as a uh, sitting in the chair of Vice Chancellor, I would like to say that uh, Madam Saini asked that how many cases have been registered and how many really had. So Madam, you know that these are very difficult questions. <laughs> so. Oh, one thing I want to say, we are trying our best to create a condition. And in Central University of Odisha, I want to tell you that uh, it is in a tribal-dominated uh, region. And most in a tribal-dominated region, women are in a majority and they are a greater strength. I see that uh, tribal ladies are more comfortable with society than with the boys and girls. Boys. And uh, for my university, uh, last year we had 50-50 uh, of boys and girls. This year, we will be happy to know that this has crossed to 65%. In the history of the Central University of Odisha, the number of girl students in newly admitted condition, that it is 65%. So, now it is a women majority university. Okay? And I think in majority of the cases, this is becoming so. So, but because of that, our responsibility is more. We are trying hard. But as it is, Madam said that it is not only our girl students, uh, women faculty, it is also the responsibility of all our gents. Whether we starting from by chancellor to the down the ladder of the peon, it is also the attitude of the men folk that need to be changed, and society needs a broad change. But simultaneously, we have to implement the act and rules as per procedure. We are there, and I assure you, what best can be done, we will be trying our best to do things. But it requires a sensitization as well as implementation of guidelines. Thank you. All my best wishes on behalf of the Central University of Odisha, and I will be seeing the recording of Madam Krishna Kumari later on. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, before uh, uh, calling upon uh, Mrs. Krishna Kumari, I would like to uh, request Ms. Ashmita Basu, PhD scholar in the Department of Biodiversity and Conservation of Natural Resources, to introduce Madam to the gathering. Thank you, Kakuni Patra. Am I audible? Now is she agree? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kakuli Madam. I would like to introduce uh, the next speaker, Mrs. V. Krishna Kumari, former chairperson, ICC Nalko Daman Jodi. She is a chemical engineer, graduated from Calicut University, Kerala. Just after, after that, she joined Nalko in the year 1986 with a work experience of over 35 years in the alumina industry. Presently, she is leading the research and development department. There, she is also responsible for the quality and process control functions, in addition to overseeing research and development activities. She also has papers and patents related to process mm -hmm. and product development to Madam, what are they going to? Madam, Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, respected uh, Vice Chancellor, esteemed guests, faculty, students, and dear friends. First of all, let me thank the committee and the coordinator for giving me a chance to be a part of this celebration. As you know, today, 9th December 2021, 20, marks the 8th anniversary of the Act, referred also as Bosch Act. Now we have a law which has come a long way. There were amendments, one of them being renaming the local complaints committee as local committee in 2016. This amendment implies that the LC is no longer conceived to be only complaint resolving mechanism. It should work proactively at awareness generation about the rights of women employees. Uh, this is what uh, your uh, committee is doing, so very happy to note that. At this juncture, it is time to assess how far we have come and what more needs to be done. Experts have already enlightened you about the Act. 
I am not an expert in the law and have always looked up to Namrata Madam whenever I needed any guidance while executing my responsibilities as presiding officer of ICC at Nalco. So I will touch upon based on my experience in dealing with the few cases. What we as working women ought to do to make the implementation more successful. Before addressing the top topic, let us just recap certain basic definitions related to the act. The act pertains to sexual harassment at workplace. Shiny Madam has already elaborated on the definitions of workplace and sexual harassment. So, what is the basic reason for these inappropriate incidents happening at workplace? Here comes the concept of gender equality. Gender equality means women and men should have equal conditions for realizing their full human rights and potential to contribute to the work organization and to benefit from the results. So the great Nobel laureate Sri Amar Kesen has identified seven basic types of inequality which spans over the lifetime of a woman. The first being, it starts from birth. The first being natality inequality. I think no need to elaborate this. Most of the parents want the newborn to be a boy rather than a girl. Now with the availability of modern techniques to determine the gender of the fetus, sex selective abortion has become common. Second comes the mortality inequality. Inequality between women and men involving matters of life and death when preference is given to men. And this takes the brutal form of unusually high mortality rates of women. Now we have basic facility inequality. Girls have far less opportunity in basic facilities like schooling and nutritive food. Then special opportunity inequality. Even when there is relatively little difference in basic facilities including schooling, gender bias can be seen in higher education and professional training. Uh, like your vice chancellor told, it is very happy to note that the number of girls joining uh, Central University has gone up now. So the change is coming. And another type of uh, inequality what the women face is uh, ownership inequality. In many societies, the ownership of property is still unequal. Preference is given to men, uh, boy, 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 child, like um, sons. Okay. Then household inequality. The family arrangements can be quite unequal in terms of sharing the burden of housework and child care. We call it division of labor. It is taken for granted that while men will naturally work outside the home, women could do it if and only if they could combine it with various inescapable and unequally shared household duties. So it is actually accumulation of labor, not division of labor. Now, the last inequality being the professional inequality. In terms of employment as well as promotion in work and occupation, women often face greater handicap than men. Still, you will find a difference in the number of women occupying senior positions as compared to men, very less. Do you think it is because there are not eligible women? Women felt unable to move up for a variety of reasons, some systemic and some based on perceptions of men who constitutes the management. I say these inequalities are the root causes for the existing culture and mentality of the society as a whole. If you analyze the incidents happening at workplace, we can clearly see that most of the sexual harassment cases are used more often as an equalizer against women rather than sexual desire. This is one way of dominating and controlling women. Now, what amounts to sexual harassment as per the bill? For example, a sexual remark about a colleague, asking for sexual favors, showing pornography or conducting offensive acts at the workplace, all of this can affect the personal as well as professional life of female workers. Sexual, racist or offensive jokes both spoken and written. Displays of offensive screensavers, calendars, cartoons or other computer graphics. Intimidating, humiliating and offensive telephone calls, voicemails and emails. Viewing of offensive or sexual magazines or websites on company premises. 
touching, leering, and suggestive behavior. Stereotyping of particular groups of people in workplace. Behavior which is sexually suggestive. Behavior which is physically threatening are some of the unacceptable behaviors at workplace coming under the above definition. All employees are entitled to a safe and secure work environment where everyone, everyone treats each other with dignity, respect and professionalism at all times. A commitment to dignity and mutual respect provides the best path to compliance. Most of us either leave the job or simply ignore and get used to this type of behavior. But just remember, that is not a solution because this is going to happen to you many times. If you don't at least acknowledge the culprit's specific actions, then he may go on with what he is doing, sometimes not even realizing the inappropriateness of his behavior. If I don't say anything, then who will do that for me? Obviously, each situation is unique and needs a unique response. And sometimes letting an incident go may in fact be the best option also. I think the reason that many women don't say anything is that they fear character assassination and believe keeping mum would keep them protected and safe. But the truth is no one should have to put up with harassment or discrimination of any sort in any environment. Being safe should be defined not as staying uh, silent, but instead as speaking up and addressing situations like these ones. Silence is what gives some people permission to do the things that they know are inappropriate. Taking action, on the other hand, is the only way to create the change you wish to see in the world. It can be scary. It can be uncomfortable and it might not always work, but it is the only opportunity we have to create a better future. So my suggestion would be to confront in the beginning, take notes, immediately notify your supervisor or another manager if the harassing behavior persists. Never allow a supervisor or manager to convince you that not submitting to harassing behavior will affect your job. Keep doing your job well. Remember, weak individuals are often targeted as victims. By acting and speaking in strong ways, individuals take themselves out of many situations where harassment may occur. Now, let us have a look at what we need to do to be successful in our career. For this, you have to understand the workplace problems and barriers commonly faced by working women. The first and the most important being work-life balance challenge. There is need for a balance between work and home life that is paired to both men and women. Many women find the work schedule less user-friendly. To this end, some companies are now offering flexi time, which is very beneficial to the uh, working women find it very beneficial. If your job permits flexi time, this is the best option companies can give you. Then lack of support from husband and family members to working women. Still a major assumption, breadwinner of the family are men. Attitude of male bosses, colleagues and subordinates not necessarily favorable towards women employees. Exclusion from informal networks. Lack of mentoring opportunities. Stereotype perception of women employees by men less committed when they have children, unwilling to relocate, they tend to be risk averse, and she is not aggressive, such remarks. Few remarks that reflect gender-based stereotypes are such as, I don't think, uh, I didn't think you, are, you would be interested in moving for a promotion since you have small children. And you are too emotional. Women also receive feedback about their appearance that make them feel uncomfortable. Like try wearing a sari that is much more attractive to men. Normally we don't classify these remarks as sexual harassment. But I feel a control on these unconscious bias is required. To address and overcome the evo issues and to be successful in the career, women have to be very knowledgeable 
and highly competent in their work. High should have high work ethics, should be assertive on issues. Commitment to the job and demonstrate performance. This is a must. Capable of putting long hours of work if situation demands. Ability to withstand work pressure and crisis situation. Not hesit hesitant, should not be hesitant to pull up persons, both men and women who are not able to perform. Articulate in speech and presentable interest. Remember, behind every successful woman, there are many men who wanted to prevent her success. It is vital to ensure that the Posh Act 2013 is actually able to prevent sexual harassment at the workplace. This demands widespread awareness among the employer, employees and other staff working within the company. Urgent steps must be taken to teach people about what harassment actually is and what impact does it have on the psychological state of the victim. This is important because women employees or workers who could be facing harassment might not know of the very fact that there is something which can be done about that. There are miles to go before we can safely say women are secure in my workplace. Let me wind up my speech with this quote from Barack Obama. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we have been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. Thank you for the patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. This was wonderful uh, talking on uh, various aspects that you have uh, highlighted for the women folk. It's a, it's a real uh, need that, yes, all education education should be. I mean, all women should be educated, which is very much lacking in India. I think very few, very few families are there who are actually giving option to uh, study for the women folk. Because as soon as they are up, I mean, 22 years plus, they are immediately indulged for marriage. I mean, even if the child wants or not, if the girl child is interested or not, nobody cares for that because family is insisting for marriage. So this is, I think, what we should prevent, that because marriage is always by choice. So if a person, if a, if a girl wants to pursue higher education or wants to get educated, I think there should be opportunity, what you have rightly pointed out, that we should be backed by the uh, family, by the colleagues of uh, when we were in the workplace to move forward, rather uh, giving sexually colored remarks and uh, making us feel that we are inferior to men. So that is a very important issue that you have highlighted and we do feel that we we ourselves also have uh, have experienced in some form or the other before the act has come into existence during our early days that we are into this such a picture. We were into such a picture. So we should not be, I, I mean, I should not feel shy in sharing this that yes, uh, there was no act at the time, although the Vishaka guidelines came at that around uh, 2009 or 10, but uh, before that, I don't think we had been into such type of legislations which are which now Namrata Ma'am has highlighted, you have highlighted, and even Shiny, Shiny Ma'am has highlighted. One one important thing that we have come across, what I what we feel is the ownership of property, which you have rightly pointed out. That right now uh, those who don't have sons, at least the property is being given to their own legal, uh, I mean, child, rather than giving it to cousins because they are sons. So, uh, to in order to maintain the legacy of the family, it is often uh, it was seen that it was uh, given only to the male child, not to the female one. So, it's a it's a real uh, uh, very uh, uh, alarming factor for us. And uh, the last point that you told that behavior of the colleagues, the the uh, the male counterpart, whoever with you are, they should have a balance of judgment. I think uh, very uh, most of our female uh, members who are present today, uh, we all know that uh, for going higher up in our uh, education or in our service, we have also felt some of the very uh, unnatural things which should not have happened. But yes, uh, those who could fight 
they have come forward and those who could not they have been lost in the society so this is a very very alarming situation for all of us and i do feel from uh, the depth of my heart and all my colleagues will say that today's discussion was a real eye opening for many of the uh, faculties many students and research scholars who have who never had the idea of what exactly this act looks at so i am really grateful to all three of you namrata ma'am shiny ma'am and you as well for highlighting certain uh, very very uh, important points which we often overlook in a, in a sense that in reading in between lines which we have often overlooked and we we do uh, we do need to open up for the children because the students are our future generation so all girl students should be aware for uh, happening what are the happenings going on what are the new acts coming up for maintaining their dignity so thank you once again for the central university of orissa for that uh, closing this uh, uh, webinar i would like dr soni pari uh, faculty member in journalism and mass communication to uh, please uh, sum up the session dr soni pari मैडम नम्रता चढ़ाइलिकल टाइम्स एंड the success we enjoy today as women is part of the struggle that has continued since the earlier times and um, she also pointed out the position of women in the organized and unorganized sector because she has wide ranging experiences working with such women and she also pointed out the work which is going on in the community and uh, gave the example of nalco madam also discussed a lot of case studies uh, as part of her real life experiences and she uh, highlighted the pressure women today undergo mainly the societal pressure that comes in the way of their achieving great heights uh, madam chaldha also mentioned the vishakha judgment the landmark judgment um, and also she mentioned various international uh, legal uh, legislations in this regard she also drew inspiration from directive principles of state policy where we see the concept of socialism equality which is a guideline for all government machinery to follow and uh, a very important uh, aspect madam taught uh, today what is the need of icc what is the need of internal complaints committee just because there is inequality therefore exists the need arises the need of icc and um, she questioned why is uh, why were there only male people at the top why not female to counter such cases of uh, sexual harassment but thankfully today the scenario has undergone a sea change and the contribution of national commission of women for women was also discussed uh, madam also explained that when whenever a woman takes a complaint she has to face a lot of shaming from society society will shame her why have you brought the complaint so that she will succumb to pressure and withdraw the complaint and she called for regular programs regular sensitization programs uh, from various organizations in this regard so that we uh, get updated and educated on uh, sexual harassment incidences and uh, madam also lamented that even today women is treated as a uh, sex object and the various uh, colored language a language she has to hear even in the uh, even reflections in the media in the web series they also glorify the torture the violence the women has to face and this is a very negative aspect that society sees and uh, as if it has become the norm women are subjugated to uh, sexist language to violence also and uh, lastly i would like to congratulate madam because she called for sensitization for the male people the how the male people view women how gender is viewed from the lens of a male so she called for sensitizing the male folk especially the boys in educational institutions and also sensitization of parents because uh, charity begins at home and parents should also be sensitized uh, so let me also uh, briefly uh, uh, tell about uh, the Uh, key points that madam shiny mentioned today 
Madam Shani mainly explained the legislation regarding the law and she pointed out each and every words regarding the law for us to better understand. She explained uh, the concept of inquiry and uh, sexual harassment machinery in the central government institutions where it is more or less streamlined as compared to the state government institutions. And uh, she also explained that uh, a woman who is aggrieved, uh, the victim who is aggrieved under ICC cannot uh, get her legal counsel. And Madam also explained, the shiny Madam explained, what does the concept of aggrieved means? Because we have to understand aggrieved and sexual harassment from the perspective of the woman, the perspective of the victim. She mentioned Article 14 also. And um, um, Madam also asked uh, whether there were cases in our university being a central government organization. And uh, it was candidly replied that, yes, there were cases in the university. And uh, the rights uh, are still at stake. And uh, one pertinent question she asked was, has the provision of legal provisions really, has legal provisions really contributed to reduction of cases? It's a very complex question to answer. Because earlier there were cases too, but due to societal pressure, cases were not brought. And nowadays due to... Um, changes in the mindset of society and uh, the legal provisions and provisions in the universities and other organizations of ICAC, ICC and uh, such cases are brought to the forum and it is highly important for us to understand each and every nuances so that we are better educated to deal with such incidents and um, Madam also pointed out the timeline because uh, to deal with such cases, timeline is very important. She concluded by uh, giving a call for a continuous endeavor. This is not a stray incident where one case comes to the forum and we uh, settle the cases, but such cases of gender sensitization, such cases of dealing with cases are a continuous endeavor by the part of each and every one of us. And uh, she lauded the in-house machinery of ICC to handle such cases. So uh, coming to the last uh, speaker of today, Madam Krishna Kumari. Um, Madam Krishna Kumari spoke about the dignity that each and every one of us, whether we are men and women, we have to exhibit in our society. Apart from being educated, being going to the workplace in a presentable manner, being efficient, being committed to our work, it is necessary for view yourself in a very dignified manner. So she called proactively for awareness generation. And um, the experience of working women was also lauded to make the act a success. And uh, she asked us to contemplate what is the basic reason for such inappropriate incidents? Is it our mindset? Is it the mindset of the society? Or is it the lack of provisions, which was earlier for lack of legal provisions? And uh, Madam also explained the concept of gender equality. She mentioned the seven basic types of gender equality as provided by Nobel laureate Amartya Sen, including, uh, he, she included birth, the inequality modality, special opportunity, ownership inequality, household inequality, division of labor, and professional inequality. And uh, at one point, Today also women are being forced to keep quiet, forced to take transfers, forced to leave the job. And uh, because the employees do not want the uh, such cases to harm the reputation of the organization as they view. So it is very important for the women to take a stand and continue with dignity. And uh, she uh, advises to be in control right from the beginning never ever apply, allow a supervisor or any other person in an authority to force you to submit, to force you to succumb. So always act strongly, maintain a balance in yourself, maintain a balance and uh, have the ability to withstand work pressure because it is you and only you who can uh, save you from such incidents. And if such incidents occur, have the ability to counter such cases and work with dignity. So uh, uh, coming to the gross reality of the situation, she. Uh, concluded with a quote that behind every successful woman, there are lots of men who do not want the woman to succeed. Sadly, this is the scenario. And uh, th there are miles to go before we really come to the concept of a society where there is absolute gender equality and change will not come by itself. Ma'am gave a clarion call that be the change you wish to bring in the world. 
Thank you very much. This is the summation of the key points given by today's panelist. Thank you again, everyone. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you. Thank you, Sony Madam. And uh, I think uh, she needs applause uh, for uh, her nicely briefing all the three speakers because, uh, I mean, she has proved that yes, she is a real journalism department uh, faculty uh, with so much of uh, uh, expertise in uh, identifying the important points and, of course, giving some solutions to it. So, thank you, Sony, Sony Madam. And last, yeah. uh, before concluding, I would like uh, to... Uh, request Dr. Rudrani Mohanty, faculty member in the Department of Oriya, and uh, she is also a member of Internal Complaints Committee. So I would request her to deliver the formal vote of thanks on behalf of Central University of Orissa. Over to Dr. Rudrani Mohanty. Madam, please. Thank you, Kakali Madam. Good afternoon to all. Namaskar. On behalf of Internal Complaints Committee, of Central University of Odisha. I am really privileged for the responsibility of vote of thanks on this Ovina. Of course, it is a tradition, but this word, thank you, is the best prayer in the world. So first of all, I deeply offer my sincere thanks to our esteemed speaker and eminent Social activist, Mrs. Namrata Chadda, Madam, Chairman, Mohila Abhijan Bhuvanishwar, for her kind presence with exposing her theory and thoughts on sexual harassment of women at workplace and its acts. Ma'am, in your speech, one important point is very clear that every individual deserves in a workplace with basic respect and which is safe and secure. So we also realized from your beautiful speech with various examples that we need a world where women do not get sexually harassed. Thank you once again, ma'am, for your valuable speech. Namaskar. I am hearty gratitude with humble thanks to our esteemed speaker, IPS S. Sainimam, IG Police, training Bijupatna State Police uh, Academy, Bhuvaneswar, who gave her vital time from her busy schedule to grace this webinar. Ma'am, a very special thanks for your valuable thought and opinion on the subject the hex sexual harassment of women and how to how the inquiry is going on. Your speech and suggestions have enlightened our minds. We all inspired by your highly sparkling words. Thank you once again. Once again, ma'am. My Yes. Mm, I want to extend my gen generous thanks to esteemed speaker, Mrs. B. Krishna Kumari, former chairperson, ICC, Nalko Damanjuri. Ma'am, today we had the opportunity to hear your valuable thoughts. Your valuable views will be going to encourage us in future. Thank you. Thank you once again to give the color of this webinar. I take immense pleasure in extending my sincere thanks to our esteemed Vice Chancellor Sir, Professor Sarat Kumar Polita, who had highlighted the direction of taking the ICC to greater height. Sir, Without your support, cooperation, and inspiration, at every point of this webinar cannot be successful. So a huge thanks for you ever. Thank you once again, sir. I extend my 
gratitude to respected register dr asit kumar das sir for his ever support to make this webinar successful thank you sir now a big thanks to respected our finance officer mr k kosla rao for his support and cooperation towards today's webinar thank you thank you sir i would like to convey a big thanks to respected controller of examination dr ram shankar for his huge cooperation and support we are thankful to our public relation officer dr phagunath bhoi his support of all times it is an honor to extend my vote of thanks to our esteemed all visiting professor for their all time support and encouragement to work forward my sincere thanks to our all hod and hods in charges of various department and all faculties non teaching staffs for their immense support thank you sir thank you madam i would like to thank our research scholar students for their support to make this webinar as a grand success i would acknowledged that this webinar would not have been successful with the help of our technical assistant mr sanjeev papneja and team thank you thank you sanjeev papneja sir and your team i convey my heartfelt thanks to icc member dr mira sai for their for her hard work to make this webinar success i would like to give thanks to our scholar prakash asmita and faculty members who cooperate us in this webinar dr soni dr anjali dr anindita last but not least i would like to give special thanks to our loving dr kakali banerji presiding officer internal complaint committee of central university of odisha for her spiritful welcome note and her responsibility to make this webinar a success thanks again you ma'am thank you all namaskar jay jagannath thank you vidani madam for this nice uh, vote of thanks so we now end with our uh, webinar today so thank you once again all of all the speakers the august gathering the faculties the students research scholars the technical assistance that we have received from our university as well as all the stakeholders particularly who are dear into this act and who are who will be helpful in in future for implementing such this act in our university thank you once again and the webinar is closed thank you thank you sir.